started. We started. We started. Yeah. Okay. We started. Okay. Calm down. Yeah. Calm down, everybody. <laughs> All right, everybody. Hey, welcome to another edition of Fresh Off the Show, the unofficial Fresh Off the Boat after show. Uh, I'm Phil. And I'm Jenny. And, and I'm. Oh, and today we have a very special guest joining us today. You are. I'm Keiko Agena. Hello, yay! Keiko. Yay! Hi, everyone. Hi. If you're following at home and you, you know, want to get to know Keiko Agena more, you could just quickly Google her Reddit AMA that recently happened, and you'll get everything you need. <laughs> That's how you know you're a big deal. Actually, right? Yeah. yeah. Or like they have a BuzzFeed version of of the Reddit AMA information. Yep. But. Keiko Gena, Gilmore Girls, Lane Kim, yes. That is, we thought, I was in that. <laughs> we thought we'd get, a, we'd get a perspective from someone who was actually on television to talk about another television show. So yes. uh, we got you got added added value today, guys, out of today's Fresh Off show. All right. And we wanted um, Keiko to be thrown into the ring as someone who should be in, in season two of Fresh Off. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Let's put it out there into the universe and make that happen. The secret. Oprah says it. Yeah. Um, all right, so we just watched uh, Fresh Off the Boat. Yes. Um, this episode was entitled uh, Fajita Man. Fajita Man. Um, why don't we just get into it? What yeah. do you guys think? Yeah, what did you think? Do you have any thoughts so just off the top yeah. of your head? Just... Oh, I really like this show. I, I liked it better towards the end, this particular uh, episode, though. Why? I don't know how. Why did I? I don't. I think... Oh, sorry. No, I, I think, to be totally honest, I think I liked some of the other episodes better, but I think this one kind of rolled into it, and then by the end, I was laughing. It built up. It yeah. built yeah. up. Totally. No, I think true. because it's a couple of things. One, I'm, I love Constance so much, and uh, she was a little bit, her, her jokes kind of hit harder towards the end. Yes. And I didn't, I don't have that, like, I need to have a video game experience or saving mm, up for a um, thing that it was felt like, wait, was, that you was were never a me. teenage boy? I was never a teenage boy. Okay. But I also never, I don't know, I never did that thing where you saved up. Uh, yeah. I think that's like a TV show thing. I don't know. Did yeah. you guys, did, did you do I mean, that? I mean, I the, the uh, learning the value of a dollar is a sort of well-worn TV trope, right? Where kids like learn that. But I, I for me, like, um, it's true that the, the episode definitely builds. But for me, like joke for joke, I felt like this was like a really strong episode. This was like one of my favorites they pack, so far. They, they pack, they've I been packing it, it. Maybe yeah. I have a soft spot for like video games and, and you know, Shaq Fu and I remember that, <laughs> and all that stuff. But I, I was like, you know, to, for a kid to like yearn for something so you that can you identify think be cool. Yeah, that whole thing was like, I thought it was hilarious. Well, clearly Keiko did not want to be cool growing up. I guess, she was already cool. I was cool. already cool. Yeah. Yeah. I was like, no, it's like a setup. <laughs> no. Well, that, yeah, I mean, I I think the jokes are coming faster and harder. Um, I, have you noticed that, like, in this episode, basically, what, this is, like, episode five or six now? Um, yeah. the, all the accents are gone. I, I, they're still Essentially, there. it's a little uh, bit there, but, it's like... It's a little, um, it's lighter. It's just lighter. It's not... In five episodes, they've become Americanized. I don't know. I, I think... <laughs> it's amazing. <laughs> it's, like, magic, right? Hollywood magic. I think it's pretty light. It's still there. It's just really light. A little light. bit. Yeah. 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 It's not well. It's it's never been really the joke. So you yeah, know, I think I think that uh, Jessica still got it a little bit here and there, and it's mm -hmm. but it's funny. I mean, it's she's, yeah. she's 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 it doesn't like sort of hide her comic timing. No. so that's that's the great part. And what I liked about this episode, um, Internet Land, is that it you could take like a classic family sitcom storyline, like oh the kids are trying to earn money to get something right, but in this case, this is like the Asian immigrant kind of version of that, yeah. which all the jokes are about how you always pressure the kids about around how a dollar is worth so much, and um, do you know what your ancestors had yeah. to do <laughs> to make money? And look at the specter of yeah. your black and white stern looking grandfather. Father, like <laughs> your father's job uh, was holding bread that was so hot it burned off his fingerprints. No, for real. Like, <laughs> like honestly, like I was surprised that they didn't have a the, the grandfather photo with an altar because I don't know, like that's like a Chinesey oh. thing. Because mm. like I know for me, like when I was I was like five and as a new immigrant adjusting and I was acting out. I think even when you're like new immigrant, especially your parents are like way more hardcore because they're like, oh, I don't like this change. So like I remember we had to like. I, I I messed up and I was five and I had to like hold my arms out and <laughs> like in front of me and kneel in front of like my my father's parents' uh, portraits. Damn. And just straight up be like, oh. think about what you did wrong while you stare <laughs> at your grandmother. Because and what grandma. you did wrong, what you did wrong shames yeah. your older generation exactly. all the way. Up. It's a reflection. <laughs> 
on on the the Yang family lineage, you know. And so I like how like the the ABC family version is like just the like one black and white. Photo. Yeah. Well, I, I like <laughs> looking all mad. I like um, you know, it's about sort of uh, you know, it it definitely recalls like Lewis has his, definitely had a hard relationship with his dad. Yes. You know? Oh, and I love like, that part. You know, I know. That but, is I, but then you know, in how it resolves with him, and it, it looks like like it could become that same thing with Eddie. But, yes. Yeah. But I think it kind of recalls like. Also, other lessons that have been kind of planted throughout this, the episode so far. It's like, yeah. you know, they came to this country for a new life. And hopefully that also means like a new kind of relationship with yes. like new generations, you know? Yeah, because they did that in the last episode with the sex talk, right? Where yeah. he's like, oh, okay, I'm going to actually do the sex talk. I'm going to explain why <coughs> leaving Taiwan was actually great because I could be more free with my sexuality, said Lewis, you know? And then in this one, I don't know. I feel like the the the, the character that's emerging with Lewis, the father, yeah. is very very different from Eddie's real father. Yeah. And their relationship. Like if any of you read right, uh, fresh off the boat, the book. Yeah. Man, their relationship was rough. Yeah. Like mm -hmm. there were shoes thrown, there were knives and plates thrown, you know, in the family. And so this is definitely, I feel like the biggest departure is the yeah. relationship. Well, this is definitely, this is definitely the, the network sitcom I version know. of the story, but I feel like it's, it's aspirational. Yeah. It's aspirational. <laughs> it's like, you know, it's obviously not supposed to be documentary, but like, there's a certain level of like, you, we can aspire to something, yes. you know, you know, immigrants can aspire to something a little bit more. That's perhaps a little bit fa fantastic, but like, you know, we can aspire to that, you know? Yeah. I, so I really appreciate that, you know, and then the way the family sort of, um, I also appreciate um, this episode. The last episode was about sex. Yeah. This episode is about hustle. Yes, about family yeah. hustle, right? Yeah. So I really appreciate um, Jessica looking for a job and that hustle. I know. Um, it it for me it kind of recalls like, I mean everybody knows somebody in their family who is like immigrant. Maybe not necessarily knows like some all the ways of the world, but he's super confident about no matter like yeah. no matter. I'm just gonna go into this this shop and no uh, just demand a job. No yeah. shame. Yeah, I know. Well, we I love her pimp walk <laughs> at the end. I just, I loved. I know there wasn't in much laugh. I was dying on Dude, the inside. It was, <laughs> for me, it was the greatest moment in history of network television. <laughs> 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 I mean, no, no exaggeration. No, I, I still maintain that um, the the silent scream of the little of, of Ian. Of Ian. Oh, oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, uh, Evan. <laughs> That's up well, there. That's up favorite. there. That's top five moments for me. But. To me, for me, this week it was definitely pimp walk. I actually have a question for for Keiko. Like, after yeah. because you played uh, Lane Kim for so long with like seven seasons, right? Yes. At some point, the audience completely has ownership over your character. Do you uh -huh. ever have you ever gotten feedback, or what what have you done when you've gotten feedback around people being upset or 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 not happy with the direction of your own character? Oh, um, I don't know. I mean, I think that when usually the people that actually approach you in public are usually you know they're they're nice or they're fans or if they think bad things they don't tell you to your face <laughs> so i haven't had those kind of um um experiences so much where they where they're disappointed in person I, in person yeah okay probably you know to their friends or on the side so if you want to email me now you can <laughs> and bring it up and what's your email are you gonna announce it just kidding <laughs> <laughs> uh, Mad at Lane at Gmail. <laughs> <laughs> yeah i'll check it i promise sure <laughs> It's just make um, something up. But yeah, no, I get a lot of uh, just attachment to the yeah. storyline, especially like with the, with the, with the um, both ways, like a, a lot of people come up with the, the mother and daughter dynamic that went worked well. Yes. And then my mother and daughter dynamic, which was very different than um, the, the main storyline. Right, which, the, the, the yeah, Gilmore yeah, Girls. Yeah, sure. Yeah, it was like, oh, they're so cool. They're like younger and they talk like friends. Right. And right, then right. you had and like I had the Korean hard ass mom. Yeah. Yeah. Sad yes. face. Sure. <laughs> so, so I almost feel like like the way that they're making this the like network spin of the relationship with Eddie's father is like kind of aspirational in that like honestly, if I was watching this as a little kid, I could relate to the family enough because of all the Asian Americanness and immigrantness. But to see like the kind of father son relationship, yeah, it's kind of amazing. Like if I were a kid, I'd kind of be like, oh. I mean, especially like, mom, dad, look at this. Yeah, I mean, because <laughs> because you, it shows you it. both ways. The, it always starts out one way, yes. right? But then you see like sort of a change in attitude, and you're like, it can be like this as well. You yes. know, obviously, like this is this is for television, so yeah. you know we're, it's going to soften it a little bit. But like, you really like, I really like the scene at the end where they're just all celebrating, and they're like, 
I don't know. But especially going back to the pimp walk, I was just thinking like, oh, my mom would never do like a like a pimp walk, right? But I was yeah. just like, but there's plenty of things that like my mom has picked up that just have surprised me from like like, like slang and things like that. Oh my like, god! You know Can I, mean? I just confess something <laughs> about my mom? My mom is straight up a senior citizen, you guys, and we've been in in the in this country for a few decades now. And she just started to curse and say the word shit. <laughs> she doesn't speak any English. But all of a sudden, she, I just heard her. She was like, ah, oh, shit. <laughs> just I'm come like, around. I'm like, mom, She's that's a real American. Cool. <laughs> I know, exactly. I just remember one time, like, me and my family were talking about something. It's like, you know, I need some cash. Can somebody give me some? And I was like, give me some cash money, y'all. Give me some. And I was just playing with my sisters. Yeah. And my mom's like, all right, I have some cash money. Here. <laughs> that's so cute. And um, I, I, in honor of uh, Keiko Agana, who's from Hawaii, I'm gonna eat spam. I'm gonna eat some spam. Used to be. Thank you for bringing us. Jaws, Jaws, Jaws. Jaws. Woo! Yeah. Jaws, Conti Jaws, Jaws. Continuing the the you know the tradition of Asian snacks and foods on our Asian on snacks. Our this this um these shrimp chips are ha are still going strong, man. Mm -hmm. I have not finished these shrimp chips, so if you guys want some, I, I think aren't they stale? But no, they're still good. <laughs> That's the power of get your stuff that you get at the Asian market, man. It's preserved. Oh, good. Um. Can As, we, oh yeah. Oh, no, no, go ahead. No. No, I also love how uh, the ending credits with the nine to five and oh, <laughs> that and was then, like oh, that was like it's gonna be so obscure for some people. I was like oh, nine so to five. We're not weird. even talking about a nineties reference anymore. Mm -hmm. It's like early eighties. But I was like, but that was funny. <laughs> but I love his friends that they they set up that they're kind of uh, growing the world a little bit. You know, yeah. at the lunch table. Yeah. And it's not um, just one type of friend that he has like all of his different little white friends have their own personalities you know which i i, I enjoy all the side characters on the show i mean mitch and what's the girl's name oh uh, nancy. The, nancy mitch and nancy yeah. oh the, the waiter fight. Oh, the, the, fight. Yeah. the sizzling plate fajita yeah. fight <laughs> but they're stabbing each other with sizzling plates yeah. uh, um, i think that the um i mean that thing about their his little group of friends around the table there it's like you know because they set it up in the beginning where like eddie had no friends but like you know, it seems like he's sort of growing this little misfit group of kids. Yeah. And, um, you know, like I think kids don't ostracize, totally ostracize a kid forever. When they start finding common ground, they just become regular kids and they find common ground around this like lame little video game. You know, <laughs> like, you know which they think is going to be so awesome. And then I, I think that that's kind of like, that's kind of like real life. You know, you just, after a while, the differences start to fall away. And this is like, they're all sort of excited about Shaq Fu. So it's nice to see. And then all those kids are like recurring characters. So. Yeah, it's, it's cool to see Eddie grow in a crew. I think, mm -hmm. especially that little kid who was giving up his lunch money so that he could buy Shaq food. <laughs> so sad. Well, I mean, I was saying earlier yeah. before the show that um, if I had it my way, I know that all of these like episodes are in the can and shot, but if I had it my way, I would introduce like another Asian character to the universe in their Japanese American. Keiko, and um, and they'd be like super Americanized and like super hip to everything and popular because that's always like how I am at like envisioned all the Japanese Americans that I grew up with. I'm like, how did you know to eat Lunchables? Like literally, I was like, how did you know to like you know drink Capri Sun? Yeah. So that's what I would want to see because I feel like that's so real. So the, yeah. the Asian intra Asian immigrant struggle. I happen to know that there is a future episode coming up oh. where there is another Asian kid at school. Is this proprietary information? No, it's, it's, it's I read it in a press release. I, I did my research, people. Oh, and so, I did uh, it. <laughs> so there's another Asian kid, but apparently that shows about how Eddie tries to befriend him because another Asian kid, and yeah. they have nothing in common. Oh, so sad face. We'll see, we'll see what happens. I don't know. I heard it happens. I grew up with a lot of Asians. So. It happens. <laughs> Just because you're the only other Asian kid at the school doesn't mean you're going to totally get along, man. Like yeah. teachers, teachers always like try to pair up the Asian kids. Like, <laughs> no. You should be friends with him, like that, you know. And I think, because um, speaking of like different ways of growing up, I grew up in Hawaii, which is majority Asian people. Yeah. And so um, like I didn't have a kind of fresh off the boat experience or yeah. or that I was different or, and you know, we were the majority. So yeah. I think like it, it's interesting for me to watch the show too, because I feel like I relate to it on a just, I, I don't know, not in, in a, maybe in a different way necessarily, because yeah. it's not like telling my story necessarily. No. But uh, but the comedy hits me just as hard. That's why I feel like it's a relatable show to any ethnicity. Mm -hmm. Yeah, because the the funny is funny. Yeah, yeah. yeah. No, it's solid. They need to they need to set a, a comedy in Hawaii. Like they need to like you know what I mean? <laughs> Asian Americans, you know, like, like not Hawaii Five O, like but a completely different dynamic. You know what I mean? I think is. that'd be so fascinating. Yeah.
So do we have any questions or comments from our studio audience? Cheers so you people can hear you. Dude, there's like 15 people here or something. It's it's 100. Incredible. There's 115. Okay, I got a we got a tweet here. It says uh, this is from Sophia Lynn. It says you did it, Dorley. I think the 95 <laughs> game might be the only video game I've ever wanted to play. <laughs> what? Do you see it then? Because he plays Dorley. That's oh, the name of the character. That's what it shows. You did it, Dorley. My bad. Oh, um, it says here that funny. people on, the, on our Google chat are talking about the Taiwan Cruise love boat. <gasps> oh. they're, like, they're, like making, they're making connections on the Google chat. Oh, they're sharing about oh. love boat experiences? Amazing. I never did that. It says here, oh, okay, so uh, uh, Dreaming Through says, the father-son relationship on the show is so sweet. I agree. Yeah, I like yeah, that. Totally. Yeah. Um, and then I Blew My Noza says, LOL, my mom just started saying YOLO. <laughs> <laughs> That's good. Nice. In case people don't know what the love boat is, it's like a language and cultural pro culture program that happens in Taiwan where a lot of overseas Chinese, usually from America, will send their kids. Yeah. Around what age? Like high school? High school. College. 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 Oh, college, oh. right? Oh. So I'd, love, I'd love to see the show get to the age where Eddie gets old oh, enough to go on Love Boat. Because yeah. it's mostly just a hookup and like party <laughs> thing. There's no boat. There's no, but it's oh, just, there's no actual boat. Oh, no. <laughs> just call it the Love Boat oh, because right, right. people hook up. <laughs> That's it's the only sanctioned reason. hooking up? No, I mean, what I feel like mean? secretly the parents like of these kids want their kids to find another Chinese Taiwanese person. Yeah, they want them to find like a match. Oh, okay. Just letting it, last time we had a conversation about black, um, uh, black spring break. Today we're going to talk about, you know, love boat, Taiwanese love boat. Um, can we talk about my favorite line in the whole show, which I don't, it might be what? controversial, but in the, when the kid says, uh, aren't you Japanese? And he says, <laughs> oh, yes. you shut your damn mouth. <laughs> I was yeah. like, wow, yeah. you know? They're not afraid. Yeah, right. totally, yeah. You know, it it, yeah. I feel like, the, you know, I, at some point, there was going to be some kind of joke where someone mistakes all Asians for being the yes. same ethnicity or something, and they handle it totally straightforward yeah, and yeah. totally in this really, like, direct way. Like, you shut your damn mouth. Well, like, because it, it not only kind of responds to the idea that I'm not, not all Asians are alike, but it actually kind of plays on a truthful beef between, like, Asian groups, so yeah. like Chinese we people, don't always get Koreans, along, dude. not <laughs> wanting to like, wow, someone <laughs> in the audience just started to do this. <laughs> you know, sometimes oh Koreans don't, don't like that they were colonized by the Japanese what? and etc. I, I, don't, I don't think they're even they're dressing it on that level. Though, no. you know what I mean. It's just, but it's just kind of like. But even if you don't know that there's this yeah. history, like if yeah. you're a kid, you sometimes get like the messages around, like, oh, you're not supposed to be proud if like people think you're Japanese, right? You know, it's just like a gut punch, though, that line. I, I know. Like, yes. shut <laughs> you shut up. Shut your damn mouth. <laughs> <laughs> um, oh why don't God. we open up for questions in the studio audience here? Any questions Any or questions? comments? Comments. Yeah, what would you it. guys like? Dude, what are your favorite egg parts? Day. Egg day. Egg day. Oh, oh, egg day. So what, what does egg day represent? Egg day represents the day you actually got paid? No, his birthday. His birthday. His oh, birthday. That's, that's all he got. That's right. Yeah. yeah. That's right. That's right. My bad. My bad. That the only treat that she got for her birthday was noodles and an egg, and I cried. <laughs> I was gonna get new. I was like noodles, noodles. I want a cake. Wow. So we. So if you didn't hear that, I don't know if you did, but um, someone in the, here in the audience said that she was upset when her mom told her that when when her mom was little, right? Yeah. Uh, for her birthday, she just got noodles and egg. Yeah. This and that was it. Like, what is what was the line where it asked if he could play with it? Was it for playing or was it for eating? Is that like, there's your dilemma? I mean, that's, that's so good, right? There's so many moments in the show where like, oh, so that's so good. good. That writing, writing is so good. Because it just it hits, it's the truth of it, right? It's like, yeah, that's that's how hard it was. <laughs> you know? Uh, what I like some we have Cheryl at, at Calm Down Cheryl uh, say, my mom had to kneel in grains of rice and stare at old photos. <laughs> I had to stare at old photos, but lift my arms up. Nice, Cheryl. I, I did the arm raising thing myself. Right? Yeah. You know. What is up with the arm raising? That's total... like some like qigong like kung fu shit, like Shaolin Temple. <sighs> my parents are so laid. <laughs> <laughs> are so laid back? Oh, too it's chill. Hawaii, Hawaii parents. Hawaii parents. Um, are uh, did anybody else here uh, not get to use the AC in your house? Yeah, got, yeah. Even though it was hella hot. <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah, the setting it to low. I know. Oh my god, like, that's a great day. The celebration. Today to we will it. go to low. Yeah. So good. And my dad used to call my sister nine during the summer. 
go go to cup foods just go to cup foods and hang out in the ice cream aisle if you're a pot <laughs> that's what my parents what, used to tell me what them. foods what foods did you hang out in a grocery store hang out in the ice cream aisle yeah. dude that's like that's like classic money saving uh, uh, tip carpet to ceramic tile so that we could lay on a tile till it was cooler than <laughs> yeah <laughs> yeah wow uh, Quincy's family. Quincy changed a carpet to ceramic tile but hey that's real you know why that's why in all the other countries in asia because it's all semi-tropical it's all tile because i know for a fact growing up uh when i visited taiwan because it, i visited in the summer i slept on the linoleum <laughs> directly like there was no covering it's just straight up like skin Maybe on like, linoleum yeah. All, all sticky, sticky and like, like rashy, <laughs> but that's how you stay cool, and that's why I have an amazing spine. Yeah, you think that uh, you think that Jessica and the family would have a more a higher tolerance for that kind of heat? Yeah, right. Right. Come like, on, Taiwan. You know, Come on now. Semi tropical. Yeah. DC made them soft. DC, yeah. <laughs> DC, DC winters. Yeah. DC DC made the Taiwan's tropical people soft. Yeah, that, that'll do it. Korean um, kind of tradition of not going to sleep with a fan on. That's, oh, a, that's kind of Chinesey. That's, 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 yeah, that's yeah. a real Korean. Yeah. Korean yeah. So so don't 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 sleep with the fan on because that'll make you um have like a cold. Or no, no 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 no. If you sleep with the fan on, you'll die. Yeah. Oh, that's, that's, a, oh, that's, that's a Korean, Korean like Korean. real a, urban myth. Yeah. Korean fan death. Fan death. Yeah. Yeah. Jenny, you didn't know about this? Korean no, I thought I knew the Koreans. Close the windows, close the doors. Yeah. What? You will die. <laughs> Korean fan death. There are people who genuinely believe that you'll that you will die if you leave the fan always. What generation this is from? Like now. I mean <laughs> <laughs> people still believe it now. It's from like back in the day, but it's Okay. Well, someone needs to try it just to prove people wrong. I sur I survived. Like warning labels in the boxes. Yeah. Like warning like, labels. Don't, play, don't use it with the, with the windows. Oh my God. I can attest. I can attest that I am Korean, and then I also have slept with the fan on in an enclosed room on a hot day, and I'm still here to tell the tale. Yay. So. <laughs> Snopes. Demystify. Snopes yeah. Snopes. That. Snopes. That. <laughs> awesome. Um, we we have a new hashtag Keiko for FOTB. Yeah. Huh? We should. We're gonna start a new one. F Keiko uh, for Keiko for fresh off the bus. Yes, uh, <laughs> I love them so much. We got here Keshi saying Asian immigrant mamas with American slang. OMG, my mom learned from my little brother <laughs> to describe that things suck. <laughs> <laughs> and then uh, Jean Kahayan says uh, that we that we the hosts are wimps. Uh, he had to kneel on beans and hold out two Bibles for punishment. <laughs> oh my oh, God! Oh, kneel on beans, dude. What's up with kneeling on rice and beans? And we should just make some rice. And, and then uh, oh. Eugenia says uh, that she hung out at the mall and at Barnes and Noble for free, <laughs> for free air conditioning. <laughs> yeah, Barnes and Noble, solid. It's a good nerdy way to do oh, it. Oh, totally. Books plus AC. Yeah, we also have other ch other snacks today. Thank thankfully, this is sort of Asian. I had a whole thing of that. This is disgusting. A whole, oh. whole bag of it. Wasabi ginger lace, whatever. I'm a, American. I'm gonna eat this one. <laughs> Prove your Americanness. This, this this is a show about uh you know melding cultures together. So well, we're doing that today. <laughs> well, I wonder at what point. I wonder at what point they're gonna do an episode where like like Eddie and them they have to prove their Americanness in some way. Like what hardcore. do you mean? I don't know. Patriotism or something like that. Drive a NASCAR. The NASCAR thing was pretty American. That's true. Mm -hmm. I don't know. Mm -hmm. uh, I'm do getting we, political where, with what's it. What's the uh, the African American kid? Where was he? Uh, we want the, the, the little black kid Walter. to come back. Walter. Yeah, he wasn't in he this wasn't episode. He was in one other episode. No, he was in right? he, just no, the pilot. He, he and cameoed then one in other. a couple others. Yeah. Oh, more than one. Yeah, he was in the sleepover episode just like briefly. Oh, okay. Yeah. Shrimp chips are better. Yeah. Um, do we have any other comments or questions for the studio audience? We're kind of actually almost wrapping up time. Now. I know. Let's take a look Damn, at any other fast. other tweets here. We have a lot, lot more tweets. Uh, we have six minutes. Yeah, we have a couple minutes left. Anybody else? Korean fan death is real. What 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 else is happening? Korean Are, fan death is real. <laughs> Someone's like, is somebody making a, a case? <laughs> somebody making a case that fan death is real? Come on, guys. I like I like how Jean Jean Kahayon is writing. He wrote. White guys with Asian fetishes are frantically Googling Taiwanese love boat right now. <laughs> <laughs> They're like, where's, 
Where's the doc? Where's the doc? <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah, we yeah. We have a lot of amazing people in the audience, but we definitely want to shout out visiting to in LA, right? Our Arthur boy. Chu. Arthur Chu is in the Arthur house. Arthur, yeah. Jeopardy champ, Follow Arthur him. Chu is here with us. He's at I'm Arthur Arthur underscore effect with an A. And uh, what I love is like right where we were setting up for the show. You know how like on, on ABC before 8 p.m. there's like Jeopardy and Wheel of Fortune. We were like seriously wanting to make sure that we as a group could solve the Wheel of Fortune puzzle before Arthur could shout it out. Yeah. Just saying. Yeah. It was as just a, a matter of pride. Good mind. We wanted to impress him. I'm, we I'm, I'm, to impress him. <laughs> that's honest. Like, that's honest. We wanted to impress him. <laughs> so yeah, shrimp chips are still gonna win. All right. So we're winding down with the show now. So uh, if yeah. you want to think of some other things to say, I'm just gonna give our shout outs that we need yes, to get please. out of the way. So we want to shout out, um, as always, Visual Communications, where we film here. They let us, they let us uh, hang out and. Uh, and watch the show and shoot the show here. They run the uh, Asian Pacific American Film yeah, Festival. Yeah, Los Angeles Asian Pacific Film Festival is happening in April, so check out vconline.org to check out uh, all their cool programming when that's up. Uh, we want to give shout out to our producer, Joanna Lee. She's yeah. on, the, on the headphones, yeah. holding at, it down. At Angry Plus One. Angry Plus One. Uh, we've got, uh, let's give another shout out to Milton of VC, who's, uh, who's been an awesome supporter here. Um, we want to thank everybody in the studio audience. Yeah. Who's here. It keeps, uh, just keeps growing and growing. I don't, you know, it's having a, we're having a good time every Tuesday night. Yeah. We got to thank Keiko, Keiko Yay. again. Huh? Extraordinary Keiko. Um, and then we also want to shout out uh, shrimp chips. Shrimp chips. I'm waiting for a sponsorship. I'm seriously here. Rose Hill Cemetery or like 99 Ranch. You gotta gotta hook us up. You know, <laughs> we're doing this I'm for banning. free. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> Um, so I think what else is that? That's about it. I, you know, we're, we'll be back here for another show next week. Yeah. Um, do we so, know what the episode's about? Uh, then I know this. I know Come on, this. episode guide. Damn it. Come on, guy that did his research. The showdown. It's called Showdown at Cattleman's Ranch. And I believe oh. the episode is about, uh, Good. Mitch who works at, at Cattleman's Ranch. He apparently goes to work at a rival restaurant. And so, uh, Louis, Louis needs to handle that. So uh -oh. that's your preview. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You're damn right. You're damn right. <laughs> I'm excited. And by the way, I love that your your new banner on your uh, blog. Yeah. Oh, features yeah. features oh, little nice. every Tuesday Sorry. every Tuesday on Angry Asian Man, I've been uh, featuring uh, cast members from Fresh Off the Boat just, just oh, for, for fun. Great. A little homage. Yeah, it's a little homage. Check out the, the banner show. at so the top of the website. Today we've got uh, Hudson in his nice little fajita man mustache. Uh, oh, looking know. sharp. Yeah. Dude. Check it out, y'all. Um, all right. Well, I think that's about it for the show. Let's wrap it up, y'all. I want to thank everybody who's tuning in. All right now, 47 of you, <laughs> 46. We've been averaging about 50 after the first 100. You know, it's been really, you know, like we said, this is like a labor of love and we're yeah. just kind of doing this for fun. And so we appreciate everybody who's been uh, tuning in and tweeting in and yeah. just chiming in and, and being part of the experience is really fun. Yeah, in, in the meantime, even though we're not doing our show, if you uh, are watching this on archive, video archive on YouTube, or just in between, you want to uh, send us a comment or a question that you want us to address for the next show, just use the hashtag fresh off the show. All right, y'all. Till next time, stay fresh. Bye-bye. <laughs>